untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at Mono Green Elves updated with Dominaria United, which introduced four copies of Leaf Crowned Visionary, two mana 1-1. One, one. It's also known as an Elf Lord, giving our other elves plus one plus one. And whenever we cast an Elf spell, we can pay a green mana to draw a card. So an amazing card draw engine, especially combined with our various three drops that can generate a ton of mana. So what did I cut to make room for Visionary? I'm down to two copies of Dwinnan's Elite, which is still quite synergistic, making a 1-1 elf token when it enters, but it always felt like one of the weaker cards at this point. And then I'm also down to a single copy of Realmwalker. Always been a very big fan of Realmwalker in the elf decks, but now with four copies of Visionary we probably don't need as many in the deck. And then we're also playing with four copies of Elvish Mystic, which got added pretty recently. So now between Elvish Mystic and Lenor Elves, we have eight of these one drops that can potentially ramp into our three drop on turn two. And then of course still playing four copies of Sentinel as well as an extra one mana elf that can still help us generate more mana. And then our win conditions include Allosaurus Shepherd, which can pay six mana to eventually turn our entire team into five fives as base power and toughness. Also makes our spells uncounterable, although not too many counterspell heavy decks in Historic at the moment, especially best of one. And then at two mana, we've got another Lord with Elvish Clan Caller, giving our team plus one plus one. Can pay six mana, tap it to search our library for another copy and put it straight onto the battlefield. Can also be a way of shuffling the top of our deck if we have a Realm Walker out, so we can maybe find more spells after we got stuck with a land on top. And then Elvish Warmaster, one of the most imported cards in the deck still. A 2-2, saying whenever one or more other elves enter the battlefield under our control, we get to make another 1-1 one, one green elf warrior creature token. And this only triggers once each turn, although we can potentially trigger it in the opponent's turn as well, thanks to Collected Company, which we'll get to in a second. And then for 7 mana, can give our elves plus 2 plus 2 and death touch until end of turn. So a slightly weaker version than the Allosaurus Shepherd in most circumstances, but of course being able to make the elves in the first place means the war Master is incredibly valuable in the deck. And then at 3 mana, besides our one copy of Realmwalker, we essentially have all cards that can produce mana equal more or less to the number of elves we control. We've got Circle of Dreams Druid, a 2-1, taps for green for each creature we control. Elvish Arn Druid specifically taps for each elf we control, which in this deck is the same, and also gives our elves plus 1 plus 1. And then Marwyn starts out as a 1-1, one, one, and then whenever another elf enters the battlefield under our control, including tokens, we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Marwyn, and then taps for an amount of green equal to its power, so it also definitely benefits from all the lords in our deck, giving it plus one plus one. So now with 12 in the deck total, Marwyn is better than ever before. And then we're also playing two copies of a Growing Rites, which when it enters lets us take a look at the top four cards to find an elf. And then when we have four or more creatures in our end step, it transforms into Cradle of the Sun, which is just straight up a Gaia's Cradle, incredibly powerful, tapping for green for each creature we control. So similar to Arch Druid and Circle of Dreams Druid. And then with all this mana from these various three drops, we can easily combo off with our Visionary to draw a ton of cards, activate Clan Caller, activate War Master or Shepherd to just win the game. And of course, Scans Collected Company, a 4 mana instant, that lets us take a look at the top 6 cards of our library, putting 2 creature cards with mana value 3 or less from among them onto the battlefield. So in this deck where we have an incredibly high creature count, we're likely to find 2 creatures, ideally some of our 3 drops which have the highest impact if we can find them with our Collected Company. And then Company being an instant means we can play it in the opponent's turn and potentially get additional tokens from our Elvish War Master. Now I'm not playing any copies of Free Elise in this deck, which I've found to be a bit of a win more card. If you get to untap with your Circle of Dreams, Archdruid or Marwyn, you probably don't need to untap them an additional time to win the game since you're already in great shape. And then uh, you cannot find it with Collected Company is another drawback. That's also the reason why I'm not playing with the Fierce Empath plus Crater Hoof package. Of course you can hit Empath with Company, but Crater Hoof you cannot. And if you have the mana to cast a Crater Hoof, you probably have enough mana to win the game with either Shepherd or Warmaster, so it doesn't make a huge difference. And then our actual mana base has a very low land count, only 19, including one Boseju, which can be helpful when facing some of the Nine Lives enchantment decks. Being able to take out the Solemnity still lets us win the game by hitting the opponent with nine creatures. And then three copies of Castle Garenbrig, which is also incredibly important in this deck, as it basically saves us one mana when it comes to activating cards like our Elvish Warmaster, can activate Shepherd a turn sooner, and just helps us double spell. Now keep in mind it does not give us the mana 
had to potentially pay for visionary since this is not quite considered an activated ability that you need for castle so do be careful there but it's still very valuable and i'm not playing the full set because if we draw multiples they will come into play tapped with such a low land count that can happen but still very happy to see at least one copy and then we're also not playing any copies of lair of the hydra since i don't want to end up with too many lands coming into play tapped in this deck and uh, we want plenty of forests so castle can come into play untapped so yeah that's our deck now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does okay we're on the draw facing gigantha as companion so could be wizards we've got a great start assuming our elves don't get killed too much turn one lander elves turn two arch druids that's kind of the ideal opening but it's going to be a play with fire to kill our lander elves so now the question is turn to Warmaster with a plan of Arch Druids, or do we try and get immediate value by playing another elf alongside it and then now just play a clan caller for instance? Yeah, I think I'm less sad if the clan caller dies compared to Warmaster. Same with the visionary, really. Opponent opts. Not going with consider which is typically the preferred cantrip, so they might have both. Small chance for points in our client Phoenix deck instead of is it Wizards. Although you typically see Ox of Agonas in the uh, Phoenix decks, which doesn't pair with Gigantha. So more likely to be Wizards. All right, we get to untap. So very likely that our opponent has an answer to Archdruid, so maybe we want to make a bit of progress by going Warmaster plus Sentinel, and then we'll have more mana to leverage next turn to maybe go off with Visionary before eventually committing Archdruid. Okay, that worked. And we can attack. Don't expect any flash creatures here. Opponent's got a wizard's lining for three mana. So they're missing a creature right now, it seems. There's Balmor. That's definitely a powerful one. Untapped lands for static discharge, killing Warmaster. Alright, so now we've flushed out a few removal spells, and it's possible that our Arch Druid survives. And then now we have the mana to activate Castle, which lets us empty our hand here. We can't quite go Visionary into Archdruid and then pay the 1, because the mana from Castle only pays for spells and abilities, but not the ability from Visionary, which is a little bit different here. But yeah, now we get to untap, activate Shepherd, and that's going to be a lot for the opponent to overcome. So even if we're not going off drawing cards with Visionary, we should still be totally fine. And then we can use Castle so our entire team gets to attack. And that should be lethal. So had our opponent found their wizards earlier, we might have been in trouble, but luckily for us it worked out. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a promising hand. Turn one elves, turn two warmaster plus another elf. Could even play a sentinel first if we want to, if we're afraid of removal and value our lander elves more. But if we do draw, let's say, an arch druid next turn, the upside might be higher of being able to play our three drop right away. Opponent also on Elves, potentially. And yeah, Warmaster plus Sentinel. Develop our mana. Make some Elves, and then pump them up with our Clan Caller next turn. 
Let's see if they have an Archdruid, if they do. So, advantage opponents, I would say. Although, being on the play might still help out here. So, Warmaster plus Clan Caller will just empty our hands. And then we're just gonna empty our hands. And yeah, then next turn we can maybe activate another Clan Caller. Found a land, so now I should also be able to activate a War Master. That will require us to tap quite a few creatures, so I might still be better off activating Clan Caller here. Opponent probably has a collected company. Yeah, that's okay. So, which creatures can we afford to attack with? Need one more mana, which means two more creatures hanging back. And then getting Clan Caller also triggers War Master two more times. So that seems worth it. Um, I guess we can keep both Sentinels back and attack with the other tokens. Sure. Alright, no collected company, that's surprising. Let's activate Clan Caller. Get another one. Trigger, trigger. And our opponent's at two. So it's going to be pretty tricky for them to recover now. Imperious Perfect. That one did not make the cut in my list. Bit slow for a lord. And our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. No one mana accelerants, only one land. That's a mulligan. This is a little bit better. Still not quite a turn two archdruid since we have sentinel as our accelerant. But uh, we'll try it. And then what do we put on the bottom is a question. So turn one sentinel. Turn two we can go elite plus shepherd. Turn 3, Archdruid, have Visionary left over to draw cards, but one of those has to go. So maybe it's Elite, and then we'll just play a Visionary on 2 and keep it as a card draw engine. Well, let's see what our opponent's up to. Red, white, maybe Heroic. Yep. Okay, War Master was a good draw. Play that now. Plus Shepherd, and then the 1-1 one -one tokens will be helpful in jumping their various heroic creatures. As always, hoping to dodge Reckless Rage, which they always seem to have. But we've got two powerful lords we can run out next turn. Alright, for now Virtuoso, that one can hit incredibly hard and potentially kill out of nowhere. But uh, yeah, we'll go with Archdruid. That one survives. We can do some powerful things next turn. And we'll attack. So, can they answer Archdruid? If yes, the game continues. If no, we have a good shot of presenting lethal next turn. For now, Ancestral Anger. Virtuoso up to 3 power. Gird for battle. That's okay. Just don't want to see a red mana into Reckless Rage. Alright, opponent's hitting us for 10. Could soak up 2, but we'll take it. And then if I play Elite, it's free basically with Archdruid. And even make some mana with a War Master. Um, or I can go with Visionary, which will pump the team, and then we'll just tap Archdruid to activate Shepherd. And I think that's just lethal here. Even have some leftover mana for another Visionary, why not? And we're gonna decline here as much as I like drawing cards. So, yeah. Opponent did not have Reckless Rage this time, and Archdruid carries us to the finish line. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. 
And while we do have a lot of acceleration here at one mana, we're stuck on one land, which sort of defeats the purpose. And uh, our eventual payoff is Shepherd, which is six mana, which we're still pretty far from. So we're kind of missing that three mana Lord to make a ton of mana. So I'll take a mulligan. This is better. And what to put on the bottom? Well, we have two card draw engines. One of them has to go. So between Visionary and Realm Walker. Maybe prefer Realm Walker because we'll be out of Elves in hand for Visionary. So it won't necessarily help us out too much. Sure. Although Realm Walker can also be a disappointment if we just have a bunch of lands on top. But our land count is relatively low in this deck. Opponent on a wide life gain deck it looks like. So next turn Warmaster plus another elf. And then we could already company on the following turn. Opponent's got to turn to Bishop however so Resplendent Angel is going to be a problem. I think we still go for company, hoping to hit Archdruid or one of our other three mana elves that can make a lot of mana. And now at least we can block Speaker if they want to enable Resplendent Angel to make a token. It's gonna be a Righteous Valkyrie first, maybe saving the Resplendent for next turn. Okay, so company is my entire turn. Probably no real reason to do it now versus waiting. I think that's still better than trying to do anything else this turn. So we'll pass. And now we keep our opponent guessing as to what we hit with company. There's a Resplendent Angel which will make a token. So yeah, opponent's deck is going off. And we'll have to present a win condition very quickly here. So we need the company to hit a big mana elf. And even then it may not be enough. Okay, we hit double Archdruid. That may be good enough, we'll see. Still facing quite the Air Force, but Sentinel helps there too. Okay, so step one. Probably play Warmaster. Can I use Castle? That's going to be a little tricky here. Because I want to wait to tap my Archdruid until after we make more tokens. So we'll start with Warmaster. These will trigger each other. So now we've got a ton of mana to play a Realm Walker. And see what else is on top. Hopefully some Elves. Okay, that's a good one. And then we want to keep going. Okay, Poseidou. So now I guess we just empty our hands and then we can still activate Warmaster thanks to the second Archdruid. Let's see here, 17, so we can activate this a few times. And attack. And hopefully this keeps us alive with the two Sentinels and then the attackers will maybe knock a few life points down. Opponent double blocking or death touching war masters fine by me. They will get some spirit tokens in return. But yeah, opponent loses the bonus from Valkyrie as well. So we might be okay here. Despite pretty much the ideal draw for the Angels deck, I guess they could have had a collected company turn 4 hitting double Resplendent Angel instead, but they might just be mono-white. Jada re-enables Valkyrie. And a Soul Warden probably would have been better played first. Speaker makes another Angel, 9-9. Nine, nine. That adds up. But next turn we get to activate our uh, War Master a couple of times, maybe even use Clan Caller. Can cast more elves off the top. Although that does not seem to be the case. Well, we could still potentially find more elves if we activate Clan Caller first. Although at this point, just 
Going for the Warmaster activations may be enough. We're also getting more life with uh, Soul Warden. So yeah, activate Warmaster. Make more mana. Activate a bunch more. And then if I tap one elf, I can pump the team. That's probably worth it. I guess I didn't even have to since I hadn't used Castle yet, so I could have had one more attacker. Send the team. And we'll let our opponent figure it out. So yeah, I should have had one more attacker here. Since Castle helps in activating Warmaster, opponent says GG. I'm assuming that's good news for us. But we'll see what happens. It's going to be tricky for them to keep enough creatures back to kill us on the way back. Since they'll be forced to make quite a few blocks here. And yeah, looks like our opponent has given up. Awesome. Well, that's a great way to reach Mythic. Beating Mono White Angels with both decks kind of going off there. Got lucky on our Collected Company to hit double Arch Druid. Okay, we're on the play with a Promising Hand. Elves into Marwyn is how we're going to start out. And then hopefully we get to draw some cards with our Visionary. Well, let's see what our opponent is up to. Turn one Swamp. Red, black. And Marwyn down. With a Molten Impact, no less. So that's going to come back to kill another creature later. So, can play Visionary, play an Elf draw card. Yeah, that's probably okay. Get immediate value and a backup Visionary. Crocs had to make his discard, at least Molten Impact doesn't trigger here. And uh, I think we want to keep the cheaper elf to draw Visionary, so maybe Clan Caller can go. So I can play Visionary, draw, and then play Elf and potentially draw twice if I drew a land. Company's good too. So Visionary, draw, and then take it from there. And our opponent concedes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. And we've got an all one-drop opener. Which honestly could work out since we can just activate Shepard at 6 mana. We even have Castle to help. And if we draw some of our payoff elves, then uh, we'll be in great shape. Opponent's on maybe a mill deck here with a storefront. And now Warmaster is going to be the preferred turn to play. Opponent could cast a Glimpse here. Mill is for 10. We're not going to be drawing too many cards with this current hand, so should be okay against Mill. And yeah, there's Glimpse. Now a Hideous Laughter could still be pretty rough since our mana curve is very low in this deck. And then we want another Mana Elf. And then next turn, maybe another Warmaster, Shepherd, another Lanor Elves, and then turn after we can maybe activate Shepherd for the win. Cacophony, Mill for 8. And do they have anything else here? Maybe. I'm gonna stick to the plan. They have a Bounce Spell for the Warmaster, fair enough. I think we still go Shepherd plus one drop as opposed to replaying Warmaster. Since I want a mana to activate our uh, Shepherd next turn potentially. I am... It's 
still have our library remaining. So yeah, get to even play an elf first if we'd like. Not that it makes a huge difference on the off chance they have a bounce spell here. But yeah, activate castle, activate shepherd. And go face with the team and even a bounce spell would not save them since we have five attackers. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, missing a one mana accelerant, which is a pretty big problem. We also don't have a third land to play Archdruid. I think this is a mulligan. Historic is a pretty ruthless format, so can't afford to stumble. This is better. And then... Yeah, I think we bottom a land, and then Mystic into Circle of Dreams, hopefully. If they kill Mystic, it's still Warmaster, and then we're hoping for a land. But I need Circle for mana, and Realmwalker as our card draw engine. And, uh... Those are less interchangeable than a land. Opponent on a red deck. So this could get stomped, but I think it's still the play. And then we're trying to get value out of our Circle of Dreams before a Chain Whirler comes down. Which could also wreak havoc on this current board. But it looks like they have a stomp instead. Alright, it's too bad. Marwyn is nice, assuming no Chain Whirler. The other way we can play this is a Realm Walker, and then next turn, if we draw lands, I can play Marwyn plus Warmaster and grow Marwyn immediately. That might be a little safer. That way we also don't expose our uh, creatures too much to a Chain Whirler. Alright, perfect. Elf on top. So now we can definitely go Marwyn plus Warmaster. Or Warmaster into Marwyn is probably better, since then we're left with an extra 1-1 one, one and the same number of counters. And a company on top is nice to have. So, yeah, Warmaster plus Marwyn. And then we'll keep the company for later. And Realmwalker will stay back for now. So even Chain Whirler wouldn't be the end of the world, of course prefer to avoid it. We're in Torbrand territory. And they're gonna stomp Warmaster as opposed to Marwyn. That's a close call. And an Arch Root on top, we'll start there. Play Elf. And then... Wait to tap Marwyn until we play more Elves, play the Warmaster, and then we'll still have the mana to company. And maybe that will move around some of the top cards so we can keep going off with our one Realm Walker here. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand is missing any sort of early acceleration at one or two mana. And being on the draw means it's probably too slow. This we can try. And then probably bottom the Visionary, keep Mystic, which probably dies, but then we're more likely to Company to catch back up. Close call, could also see an argument for keep Visionary, bottom land. Although if they kill the Mystic, then could get us in trouble if we don't draw a couple lands. Put on blue reds, Wizards, without Companion. This is definitely the type of matchup where having company is important as a way to potentially get back on the board after some early removal. Balmors, bad news. Although probably not as bad as an Arcanist, to be fair. So there's no way Archroot survives, but I think we still run it. It's the most mana efficient play. Next turn we're going to want a company. And then we can maybe keep Visionary until we can uh, draw some cards with it right away. A Reckless Charge. Adding a ton of damage to the board. Wizard Shining for one mana. Yeah, we're taking at least 11 here. Did have got another one. Wizard Shining Face. 14 puts us to 2. Well, that's uh, going to be bad if they flash back Reckless Charge. 
best I can hope for is company hitting the uh, Sentinel to block Balmor plus another ground creature. But it's probably still not going to be good enough. Well, we can only try here. Yeah, Balmor just kills you very quickly, but of course double wizard lining for one mana is uh, incredibly powerful. It's going to be a Mentor's Guidance times two. Not sure if that's better or worse than a Reckless Charge. The fact that they kept on top is probably bad news here. Alright. Let's company and hope for the best. We hit Sentinel plus Visionary. And I guess they still trample for two. So yeah, I still die here. So it's not all that helpful. Yeah, I guess we needed Sentinel plus Archdruid there to have a chance. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a Promising Hand. Turn two, Circle of Dreams. Turn three, Company, maybe. We'll see. Against turn one, Forest, I like my chances. Could be the mirror match, but we're off to a faster start. And the Growing Rites is kind of perfect here, since... We'll be able to cast company with the mana from Growing Rites. And find a clan caller, nice mana sink as well. If it weren't for summoning sickness, we could have activated clan caller. Opponent does have the turn 3 arch root, so game's definitely not over yet if we miss on this company. But uh, that's a pretty good hit, I would say. Another company, but let's start by casting stuff off the top. And uh, I'm likely tapping these, so we'll use castle first. Okay, Visionary is nice. And we'll pay the one. Or I guess it doesn't matter since it's on top of our deck. We can just play another Arch Druid. Maybe prefer keeping the uh, Cradle for later and play Arch Druid for now. Although I guess there's a chance we want to attack with that one. Once again, no point in drawing when we can play off the top. Now we can draw. And then now we can company or activate clan caller to get rid of the top card. One clan caller left. Can play Archdruid. Don't think I'm using Castle. So we'll just use Cradle. No point in drawing. Now we can draw. Oh yes, we're going off. Yeah, this also kind of shows the power of Realm Walker, saving us a lot of mana that we would have to spend on Visionary otherwise. So yeah, Elves versus Elves, but the one uh, on the play often ends up winning. So yeah, that's our Mono Green Elves in Historic, a very powerful deck. It is beatable, especially those red mid-range aggro decks with lots of one mana removal can uh, kind of kill your early acceleration, slow you down, and then probably take over with something like an Arcanist, which can repeatedly kill your creatures, or as we saw, Balmor just killing you very quickly out of nowhere. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.